All right then, we've um, gone outside and let's have a look at some sort of real operation of how a DC to DC works. Now, um, I've got with me Archie. Archie's our favorite new little product here. Um, great portable system, but we're not talking about Archie today. What we're talking about is the DC to DC. Um, but the reason I'm using Archie, it's nice, simple. It's got a battery built in, um, great example. So the DC to DC is actually located in behind here. So one of these exact units just mounted in here. So um, same operation, everything. So let's start off with, um, now, I mentioned earlier on about um, unregulated solar panels going into this. So we've actually just got a, um, one of our 240 watt folding solar panel kits over there. We always recommend using the red Anderson plugs on it. Now, the reason for this is because that's unregulated. Now, obviously this can go up to 20 or if you're using um, household panels, you can get, be getting up over 40 volts, um, which you don't want going directly onto your battery. So they actually have different interconnecting plugs there, which means you can't plug it directly into the input. So let's look at when we're just running off solar. So we can see when the unit powers up, it will go through a startup period here showing software version and all that. Now what we can see here is it does actually have a flushing code next to the solar input. So channel two is the solar input. It's currently flashing. That means it's actually just sensing the voltage input and making sure it is high enough to engage and start charging. If you're close, you'll actually hear a little click when it goes to solid. So now that it's solid channel two, that means it is actually using our solar input to charge the battery. So what will it be doing here? It will be going through the voltage, showing the voltage of the battery, and also showing 9.4 amps there as well of charge going in. You can actually cycle through there as well. So we can see channel two voltage. So channel three voltage is nothing. We don't have the car running at the moment. And again, channel two voltage, we've got 14.9 volts coming from our solar panels there at the moment. And as again, if we just allow it to flow through the screens, you'll also see exactly what your uh, current is going into the battery. Now I might just pause there. Um, a common question we get is, whether it be an AC charger or one of our DC to DCs? It may be, for example, that the current you're seeing here on the charger isn't matching up with the EPRO or any other meter, um, but let's say one of our EPRO pluses here. The reason for that is relatively simple. The charger is outputting not only charge going into the battery, um, but for example, if my fridge was cycling on at the moment, it's supplying power to the fridge as well as power to the battery. What the EPRO plus meter is showing is only the power going into the battery. Whereas on your AC charger or DC to DC charger, it's showing the full amount of current coming from your charging source, going to the battery, or going to any loads, um, be it your lights or your fridges. So that is why you will see a discrepancy between your screen. Now, if you've got everything isolated on your caravan or in your four wheel drive, for example, and you're not pulling any current, those values there should line up very closely. So just a little tip there as well. Now, what we'll do here um, is I'll get Kane to start the vehicle. And what you'll see there is same thing. We'll see channel three will actually start flashing. So I just started the vehicle then. Again, on Archie here, we've used the blue Anderson plug. Again, just to make it simple that you plug them into the right inputs. So that's going into channel three, the vehicle or battery input onto the DC to DC. It's currently flashing there, showing that it has sensed a source, but it's not yet engaged. It's still locked onto the solar at the moment. And we'll see after a short period of time, it will change across to the actual vehicle charging input. Now, that is a key point of the DC to DC. It does prioritize the vehicle input over the solar. So again there, as soon as you start your car, it will actually start running off the vehicle rather than running off the solar. So what we can see there at the moment um, is we're running there now, we're locked onto channel three, we're locked onto vehicle charging now. The solar, channel two, is still flashing, showing that it's available, but it's not being used. All right, so we've looked at some of the basic operations and what those uh, indicators show when they're flashing or when they've gone solid. A couple of other um, more advanced features that not everybody needs to use, but they're just handy to know they've got there. Um, first off, we'll press and hold the, uh, the select button. And there we go, now we've seen auto come up. What does auto mean though? What auto means is it's actually gone into fanless mode. So therefore, for example, um, that if you're trying to have a daytime sleep or something like that and the fan underneath your lounge is annoying you or something like that because you've got plenty of solar coming in, it's now overridden any of the automatic fan control and the fan will not turn on. 
What that does mean though, however, is the output of the unit is restricted by 50%. So if you set that H value at uh, 40 amps, it is only going to output a maximum of 20 amps. So just keep that in mind. Um, now as another practical application, all that, if for example, um, you're a little bit uh, like I normally do, where I've got a DC to DC in my vehicle, plus also one in my um, camper trailer, that if the both batteries are dead flat and you want to take it a little bit easier onto your alternator, you can very easy, without going into any of the other settings and bearing mess messing any of those up, just press and hold that select button, go into auto mode, and that will restrict um, whichever DC to DC you choose down to 50%. So a nice way just to take it a little bit easier on um, your alternator if you've got two DC to DCs running in parallel. Um, now with the fanless mode, um, or auto as it shows up, that will time out after 12 hours. Um, so you've had your nice little nap and all that sort of stuff, automatically 12 hours later, the fan will start running auto, you'll be back up to 100% capacity. Um, if you want to take it out though, it's the same, just press and hold the auto button. Now pressing and holding the set button, um, we see this quite often, um, either accidentally pressed or um, intentionally pressed, um, for example there. And now what we have come up there is priority mode. So what is priority mode and why do you need to use it? Priority mode is just like having that ignition input connected to the DC to DC terminals. What that now has done is allowed the DC to DC to start charging from your vehicle battery at a much lower voltage. Uh, so again, it's not recommended. Normally if you've got low voltage to the DC to DC, you should have the installation checked. Look for any loose connections, look for a loose fuse, for example, um, to make sure you're actually getting good voltage to it. But if you're really in a pickle and you need to get your auxiliary battery charged up, for a brief period of time, you can press that set button, go into priority, and it will actually start charging. Now it will be at lower output on the current side because that voltage is lower, but if you want to, you can get out of a pickle. Now, one key thing that we see here, and from a fault finding point of view, is quite often people are saying, my start battery is going flat quite often. And that can be because they've accidentally pressed and held that set button and activated priority mode. So again, to pop out of priority mode, just press and hold that um, for around about the 10 second mark there. There we go, so priority mode is now disengaged. Again, just keep an eye out that you haven't accidentally engaged that priority mode when you've been pressing around with the buttons. All right, so some of the other screens that you'll see um, scroll through this unit um, from time to time will be depending on whether it's set as a lithium or a AGM or a gel. They do vary a little bit. Um, however, as an overall rule, some of the key ones you'll see there is one that's BUL. What does that mean? That actually means the charger is in bulk mode. So it's outputting the most current it can um, to recharge that battery. So that's the first mode, is the bulk mode. The next one is absorption. Um, so it does sort of look like an A65. Absorption, always get that question. What is that? That's in one of the final charging curves. Now for a lithium, it only happens for a very short period of time. But ABS is absorption mode. Perfectly normal at the end of the charging curve of a battery. The next one, either FUL, full, or FLO, float mode. Um, what that is, is the battery is now full and the DC to DC is just maintaining the charge. So that's the three that you'll see come up on the screen. Again, they vary a little bit um, depending on what setting you have the charger on. Um, but BUL, bulk. ABS, absorption. FUL or FLO being for float mode. The other one you'll see coming from time to time as well um, is CHE or what that also means is as I touched in earlier, is when it's running off the vehicle input, like we still are now, every three minutes, it will actually shut the DC to DC off, have a look at the alternator voltage without any load on it, and if it's still at the susceptible rate, it will then re-engage the charging. So uh, if you're being very particular, sometimes like me, looking at your VTEC app, for example, you'll see that charging drop off, will stay there for a few seconds, and then it will softly start going back up to the maximum setting again. So CHE will be for check, um, again, about every three minutes, it will go through that check period there. So that's on the key um, fault finding side there. Now, I'll just um, do for example, Kane, if you can just shut the car off there again. We'll just turn the car off there and we'll see that it automatically changes back to solar. We've still got the solar panels out. Um, it's still been flashing there. So now we can see channel three is no longer lit up. Therefore, it's got no source completely isolated. 
That is because I've got an ignition controlled relay on my particular situation. So we're still flashing there, showing channel two that we've got a source there, but it hasn't quite engaged yet. I just heard a little relay inside click. And as we can see now, channel two has gone solid. Therefore we are charging back from our solar again. And we can see there as it scrolls through the screen, about 5.7, 5.6 amps. We're starting to get a little bit of shading on the panels there again now. 